Good day everyone. It's time to mold the bison. Now this one I'm going to try to mold with the base on it. I think this one is going to need four parts. When you look at the legs, they're squared up. So I'm not going to be able to do a two-part mold. The horns here give another dimension. So again, I couldn't do a two-part mold. So what I think I need to do is put a plug in between on the legs, another plug bracketing the horns, and then the two halves. I begin by blocking off the places I don't want the rubber to go with clay. I need to make sure that there's no point where the rubber is going to encase or entrap the legs or the body because I want to make sure I can get it back out once I pour the rubber. Some people like to encase the entire thing in rubber and then cut around all the places like this. But I don't find that to be very precise and I think cutting is kind of difficult. So when I add the clay, it just gives me a precise parting line where I know it's going to part in the right spot. So I've got the plug on top and the plug in between the legs done. But I'm really starting to think I shot myself in the foot here by trying to mold this with the base on. Originally I was thinking I would fill the mold in this orientation through the legs and the base would be an open platform that I would also fill in. But that's not going to work. If this was a resin cast, it might. I need to cast this in wax. Furthermore, I need to do it hollow. If I pour the wax through the legs, they're not thick enough to allow me to get a hollow cast. The legs are going to plug up before I can fill the body or empty the body. So I need another inlet that's going to allow me to get enough wax in and out to coat the thing. But I can't do that because the base is in the way. So I'd have to cut a hole through the base anyway. And if I try to get wax in in another orientation, base itself makes another issue. I'd have to close off the base and because it's another plane of air that I need to vent out, I'd have to have another piece to the mold, which is a pain. So I think I have no other choice but to try to remove the base from the bison. The only way I can think to take the base off is to break it. A little bit of the hoof broke off. Try to glue that back on. From here I'll cradle it in clay and I'll make a nice bed for it to set in so I can set up my parting lines for the two halves. It looks to me like I'm going to need an extra plug around the tail for it to come away freely. I need to make sure that all the clay is packed as tightly as I can so there's no cracks or seams for the rubber to leak into. Then I'll square off the edges and put up the sidewalls for the box. Then I'll close off any cracks along the sides of the wall. For the horns, I'm not going to completely vent them. I'm just going to give them a place for the air to get out of the way. For keys, I'll take my ball stylus and make an impression into the clay. It basically turns it into a big Lego so it locks right back into place when it's time to put the two halves together. I use a tin based silicone rubber. I buy it locally and it's a 10 to 1 mix ratio. Once it's cured, I can start clearing away the other side and get ready to pour the rubber on the second half. If the clay isn't pressed tight enough, there'll be a gap where the rubber can leak into and then you have to clear away these little stringers. I was hoping I could clear away the clay without separating the two halves, but it's just too hard to access, so I just had to separate them anyway.
Without mold release, you end up with one solid block of rubber. So if you want it to part, you gotta spray mold release on it. I was thinking I needed a little extra flexibility for these plugs, so I used a different kind of silicone rubber. This was a mistake. It turns out the two rubbers were not compatible with each other, so I didn't get a good cure set with this different kind of softer rubber. I don't know why, but this is just covered in slime. I don't know what that is. So I don't normally use this kind of rubber and I just realized it's a platinum based. Mixing platinum based rubbers with other things can be sketchy. Thought I was mixing tin based with tin based and that's why it's all slimy. So I went back to the original rubber to finish pouring the other plugs. Then I had to figure out what to do with this slimy mess. I asked around and was told that if I use some isopropyl alcohol, I can clean off the silicone slime and start over. Still easier said than done. But once cleaned, I just filled it with the original rubber, which I should have done in the first place. I think we're finally to the point where we can test it. It ended up being six pieces. We got the two halves, a plug for the horns, a plug for inside the legs, and two plugs for the outside of the leg. So in theory, everything should fit back together and lock in place. And I cleared vents for the feet and the tail. Kind of satisfying when all the plugs are removed and you're left with an exact copy of the original. No damage, no broken legs. So it seems to work pretty well. All the important detail around the face is captured, the tail is captured. There is a parting line along the back that we'll have to deal with. But the parting lines along the plugs are pretty good. Won't have to detail those at all. The plug around the horns and the hump. So little issues, I'll need to do a little wax chasing for that. But overall, I think that's gonna work out pretty good. I think mold making is one of the most challenging parts of lost wax casting. Every time I do this, it's kind of trial and error. But I'm proud that we got something to work out. This guy's on his way to bronze. Come on back for those videos. Check out some of my other stuff. Thanks for watching.